has its shock absorbers in the center. And there are two arms connected to the rotating joints. And the two arms move up and down now. And they're both connected to each other, so they move in tandem with each other. Not only is the system uh, more balanced, but it also allows for the shock absorbers to um, be better placed within this limited area. Before, the shock absorbers were connected to two uh, holes here in the body, and that didn't allow for enough movement. So hopefully this design um, is a little bit better when we get to printing this. So I want to show you the cuff here, the rotator spindle. And if I open this, you can see my rotator spindle here. And I can point out some of the features and ways that this was made. So as you may know, this started really as a single sketch. And this single sketch uh, looked just like this. And it was rotated along this axis. And once it was rotated, it looked just like this, as you'd guess. And it's solid, it doesn't have any hole, so the hole was added as a secondary operation. And from here, there was another sketch made for a hang-off extrusion which wasn't used. And the main extrusion, this one, is the one that's actually connected to the screw now. So that uh, disappeared, and from there we created a second extrusion here. So as you can see, this was kind of uh, thought out as I went along. And I think that's sometimes the best approach um, when you're working, you know, to create a, a design of something that you're not exactly sure what the look of will be yet. Um, oftentimes it's great to start off with a sketch, but when it comes to my new details, sometimes you just have to model it up and see what it looks like. So here you can see uh, that there's this extrusion, which comes from the off center. And there's actually a, a plane that I created, which comes off of the origin plane, and it's 0.607 inches away. And from this offset plane, I created a symmetric extrusion on that plane. And once that plane was created, I just made this extrusion. So you can see the sketch for that extrusion. As you can see, there are even little sketches in here that I didn't use. So I made the extrusion first. And once that was made, I created this cutout. And within the cutout, I created the holes. Whoops. And from here, you can see that I have an array. So I arrayed this one time. You can see the two here for the quantity. But I arrayed it so that way I have two arms. And that's what I wanted to connect to the shock absorbers. So I think this is a fairly robust now it depends uh, what orientation you print it in. I'm probably going to be printing it on the bed like this. And that's the strongest, um, strongest orientation. Because the stress is going to be coming um, in this direction. So for that reason, I want to have my layers uh, building up this way. And so with this rotator, I've attached that, of course, to the assembly. And I've added a screw, three millimeter screw, to go all the way through the assembly and to come out on the other side with a nut here on the other side. And as you can see, um, it attaches and connects it to the rest of the assembly um, you can see that the screw actually runs throughout the entire length of both arms. And I'm considering getting a partial thread screw for this. So I'm really thinking of having just the thread here and then having this whole thing just be the shaft uh, because it would be uh, less friction. 
but it's really not a huge deal because uh, the inside bore of the of the shock absorber is smooth, so it shouldn't matter that much. Either way, um, that's the, the current design. And again, I'm not sure if, if this is the best design. I just know that this is the design that um, needs to be tried and tested and possibly improved upon. So that's what we have so far. And the next order of business really is figuring out a connection to the electronics and figuring out the ways that the DC motor is going to be powered. So as you may have guessed, this entire assembly is going to be mirrored onto the other side. And I even made sure that these, that these motors cannot touch each other by accident. That being said, um, there's going to have to be room here more likely for a Raspberry Pi than an Arduino. I was considering using an Arduino, but I believe I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi for motor control as well as for the um, addition of some sensors, possibly. One of the things that will need to be dealt with in a future video um, includes strengthening the walls of the tank body. As you can see, this design cannot work right now, and the reason is because the tank body if built this way, would be flexing like crazy. You have a lot of weight on this wall with little to no support. And the wall, if it bends, can have a detrimental effect on the rollers because of the, um, the arm bending. So as you know, there's a lot of stress here on this screw. This screw is actually being bent downward because of all the weight over here and especially all the shock that comes from uh, stones and rocks and whatever else that just goes over hitting it from the bottom. So um, there's a lot of stress here on the screw and there's definitely going to be a question of strengthening the wall and strengthening this inner body piece so that way um, it allows for some more robustness here. Um, there also may be a cover that goes over the top, but we'll get to that in a future video. And stay tuned for the next one where we're going to get a little bit more into electronics and some of the other things that are required to drive the two DC motors, as well as how we're going to connect some sort of controlling device um, for movement and control of the DC motors, as well as um, some sensors and possibly some, of course, batteries that are going to be um, in parallel.